Good evening, everyone. It's right at six o'clock. It's our ninth Advent Vespers, ninth in a row. We're setting a record. It's a world record. Call Guinness Book of Records and tell them Pastor Phil's done nine Advent Vespers services in a row. But tell them to hold the presses because we're going to do one more tomorrow, God willing. <laughs> no, it's good to have you with us. Again, this is Reverend Phil Anderson of Oakland United Methodist Church in Kansas Avenue, United Methodist Church. Here's my beautiful wife, Gloria. She's back! So I know the views are going to come up because, you know, the views have been lagging a little bit. So now that you're back, we're going to start seeing more people. I think the first couple, we had 60, 70 people watching. And now since I've been flying solo in the last week or last four or five days, it's numbers have dropped off. So anyway, we hope that you all are having a good evening. It is again Tuesday evening, December the 22nd. It's hard to believe three days before Christmas. Do you feel like it's Christmas or not? Mm -hmm. It's starting to feel like, well, she's done a lot of baking and gift wrapping and things. I can't say I've done as much of that, but she's done an awful lot. And my uh, sister, Sarah, she's always doing a lot. Good evening, Polly. Good to have you with us. And uh, Sarah's, Sarah's, in the Christmas spirit, I think, don't you? Yeah, she's so. she's been doing some Christmas things, I think, delivering. just delivering things. Friend. Yeah, it's a little little, little challenging. Again, we we'll do the best we can. It's fun to call people though. Just wish them a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Have you uh, had any interesting things happen this Christmas season or not? Well, I've been just blessed with friends at work and uh, my family and thinking about all the favor and blessings throughout the year mm -hmm. and, and getting our granddaughter, baby Nola Jo, yeah. you know, we're, we're just giving thanks. A lot of, lot of thanks. And on, on uh, Christmas Eve, I'll be getting my COVID vaccine Christmas Eve. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Yeah, now Santa Claus will be coming down the chimney with a real long needle. <laughs> So I don't know how he's going to do it at your place, but that's how I think he's going to yeah. come. He's coming down. Coming with, for you. I just hope <laughs> Santa doesn't trip and fall and give himself a good poke. But <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, but yeah, you know, the kids were over here. What was it? Sunday night. We had our two granddaughters, if you were watching. And one of them, clearly, I think she was over here. And, and she said, Granddad, five days till Christmas. And she was just jumping, literally yeah, jumping up and down so with her exciting. arms. Oh. You know, I can't say I've jumped up and down and, and just been that excited, but it has. It is getting excited. And uh, Kamara was here, of course, and my, our two granddaughters. So, I want to remind you again that tomorrow will be our last Advent Vespers, and then Thursday night at four we'll be doing our Facebook Live, and we're going to post tomorrow on our Facebook page the Facebook Live Christmas Eve service. Let me continue and finish that. So, four o'clock Thursday night at Oakland. And uh, Joe Campson's going to be there from Kansas Avenue. He'll be playing the piano and keyboards. Regina will be doing the vocals. Mm -hmm. Regina Asher from Oakland. We love hearing her. And and so uh, then it'll be whoever else shows up. There won't be very many. It's oh. not going to be open to the uh, no. congregation. But we may have our granddaughters there to light the candle. We don't know yet. So there could be a couple of surprises. Right. But uh, that'll be the Christ mm -hmm. candle that'll be lit on uh on Thursday afternoon, so it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward. I'm re actually, I'm really looking forward to that one. And um, so, do plan to be with us. And it's going to be on Facebook Live like this. We hope it's going to have decent sound and everything. And we'll make the best of it. And I talked to a friend of mine today, and he told me about these little cameras called uh, what I call me 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 Vimo Vimo. I think they're they're two little cameras. About they're about this long. And uh, they're about the size of, a, I guess, an egg roll, if you were to look at it. And, and, and they were made out of, of course, electronics. They're about that big. And he has two of them. And he, uh, he says they work great. He showed me their video they do from their church, and they do it on their Facebook. But it, it is nice. So that's on my wish list for uh, the next uh, few weeks. We can hopefully get those. We do that. We're going to be... We're going to be rolling in these churches with our Facebook. And this Facebook's going to continue, I think, no matter what happens with COVID. So anyhow, you know, we've been talking a lot through this Advent Vespers about Christ leaving his, his heavenly home coming down to earth. And, you know, we don't always think about that. I, I, I wonder, you know, and, and God, and everything is possible with God, mm -hmm. right? We, we read that. Uh, in what was that the other day we were reading on Sunday, Luke, about where 
the angel came to Mary and told Mary she was going to have the baby Jesus, then what did the angel tell her? Is any, nothing is, for nothing shall be impossible with God. And so, uh, anyhow, that was the day my wife's birthday was uh, Sunday, December 20th. And I went over to uh, get her some things, and I saw a little sign that said, With God, all things are possible. Yes. I thought, man, that was just perfect, because we just talked about it that morning. Mm -hmm. So we got a little sign that's up in the kitchen over there. And so, anyhow, um, that's going to be sort of the theme here as we continue on. And even tonight, we'll talk a little bit about this whole idea now as we, as we really hone in on the Christmas story and what preceded it. So, you know, we look at um, Christmas Eve, we always celebrate Jesus coming into Bethlehem, but we don't want to forget what happened before that Mary was betrothed to Joseph and the angel then came and visited her and he announced to her what was going to happen. And, you know, like I said, we in the Protestant churches, we, we don't always necessarily give a lot of attention to Mary. Maybe not, probably, maybe not even as much as what we should. Catholic friends of ours, uh, they, they do honor Mary in, in a probably much deeper way, I would think. But, you know, it's okay to remember what Mary did. It was an amazing act of faith for her, wasn't yeah. it? Yes. And I believe we'll be talking about this tonight. So I'm going to let Gloria read this today from Luke 1, 26 to 38. Okay, Luke 1, 26 through 38. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph. A descendant of David, the virgin's name was Mary, and the angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. Mm, mm, the mm. Lord is with you. Yeah. <laughs> Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Yes. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come to you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Mm. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So Mary, even though... She was willing. Yes, yes she was definitely willing. It kind of came right off the... The back. Can you imagine the angel coming to see uh, you or me? And it would it would certainly startle us. And and yet she seems like she took it in pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Now it's interesting that Mary asked the angel that question: How can this be? I am a virgin to have this baby. And then of course the angel said, "The power of God will come upon you, and the Holy Spirit will overshadow you, and you will conceive this child, which will be." the son of God. So it's going to be completely holy because it's God's son. And she was carrying God's son. So now Jesus did not have an earthly father as we think of fathers, but, but he did have an earthly mother because Mary carried him. Yes. As, as we'll find out, well, Thursday night, we'll read that story from Luke 2 where Mary and Joseph, they went all the way to Bethlehem from Nazareth, and you know, you think of how long that road was. That's a ninety-mile trip on a donkey. That's yeah. a long way on a donkey. Yeah, and she—I bet she walked part of that, don't you? That would be hard to ride. How'd she ride? She, think she, she sat, sat, she sat side saddle. You think she sat like this, probably, with her feet over the edge? I, I, I would think so. Probably. probably didn't walk very far. I mean, if she was full with baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, tip. I yeah. wouldn't want to walk that right? yeah. 90 miles, yeah. uh, 9 months, 10 months pregnant. No way. It's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah, and Mary She's was young. Mama. We don't know exactly how old she was, but she was young, of course. That's yeah. how 
the marriages were done in those yeah. days, pretty much. And uh, so uh, Mary was an amazing woman. And, you know, throughout Jesus's life, Mary knew that he was the son of God. Yeah. She knew he was the Messiah. Yeah. Do you remember, uh, I want to deviate here for a minute. This is why these things go a little longer. But my, my thought goes back to the very first miracle that Jesus performed. Do you remember where that was? Yeah, the wedding in Cana, where what did he do? He turned the water into wine. So, 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 you, but, but before that happened, it said Jesus, and I think a few of his disciples, they were there in the wedding. They were probably, they were probably hanging back, you know, kind of like this. And what is this thing going to end? <laughs> All of a sudden, Mary comes up. Hey, Jesus, uh, can you have a word with you? Yeah, what is it, Mom? <laughs> uh, they're out of wine. And Jesus says. Not my problem. I didn't. I, they didn't. I didn't order the food and the drinks here for this occasion. And uh, I think Mary knew that Jesus was going to take care of it. Uh, I don't believe she had to say a whole lot more. I just think she knew. You know how moms know. Moms know things. And so Mary, uh, basically, uh, Jesus will take care of it. And of course, the water was turned into wine. He had them fill up the vats. These were huge vats that held, you know, like, what was it, uh, 50 gallons of... Well, it must have been like those big containers at the football games that the football players drink at. You know, mm -hmm. they push the button, they get their little cups. And, yeah. I mean, I bet, were they big like that? I think they're or bigger than that. Oh, bigger. Whoop, I'm pretty sure. I, I, you know what, I haven't read, I, I, need, I should brush so up big. on that. But, but, but see, the thing was, Mary knew all along that it was, that Jesus is, Jesus was the Messiah, the Son of God, and I, I think she was just in awe yeah. of, of Jesus, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, when Jesus was dying on the cross, a lot of the disciples had left him, yeah. not Mary, Mary was the mother of Jesus, was right, right there, remember what Jesus said, he looked down, and he told John, he said, uh, behold your mother, in other words, you're going to take care of her now. John was the only disciple, I believe, who was yeah. there at the crucifixion. And you remember, uh, that's why Jesus came, was to die on the cross. So, it's it's a great story. But the but the what did they say that the manger in Bethlehem cast the shadow of a cross? So 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 we knew that that, that the the star of Bethlehem hits that manger and it casts a cross because that was where Jesus was ultimately going. By the way, did you see that Bethlehem star last night? I don't know. I don't. Yeah. I looked. I, tr I tried. I, I don't think I saw it, but I was looking. Andrew and I went out, and yeah. Andrew got cold, and he came it was inside. A chilly. And I kept looking. I, was, I think the trees were in the way or something. The trees. Yeah, we. It's not a good place to stargaze right yeah. here. But I didn't see it. I, I must say I looked briefly as we were finishing up our walk before we did our devotional. Maybe Burnett's Mound or something. We have Burnett's I'm Mound. I sure would like to go see it. Yeah, you can see the Pacific Ocean from Burnett's Mound. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Folks, I hope you're enjoying this as much as we are. No, I'm kidding. Um, I can see the Jeffrey Energy Center th from Burnett's Mound, though. Oh, Those two stacks, way. you know, Jeffrey Energy Center is out by sea. That's, what, 30 miles, 25 miles? Yeah. That's You know, that's a long way, so... Well, let's read our devotional called Imminent Arrivals. Our family had gathered. This is really a cute story from Bill Crowder, by the way. Our family had gathered for lots of food and for catching up with each other. Mark, our youngest son, had arrived early with his wife, and he told his mom he wanted to pray for the meal. Now, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? If, I mean, not, a, not that our kids couldn't do that. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked, but yeah. I'd like, hmm, that's, it. that's different. Yeah. So so that's good. I want you, that'd be great. Let's, let's have you pray. So... We, as he said, we found that a bit surprising. I think most parents would. Again, not that we'd be shocked. It would just be, hmm, what's going on here? That ain't ever happened before. So as Mark, because Mark here, see, was usually quiet. There you go. So we soon found out why he had made such a request. Why do you think Mark made that request, Gloria? This, and this is, there's no rehearsal here. What do you, what, it's an unusual request. I'll, I'll maybe, pray to Maybe you just. Felt like you need to do it. Okay. You, well, okay, well, let's hear what happens. This is interesting. So, and that's how, okay. So as Mark began to pray, he choked up, it says. 
First, he thanked God for his wife, Amy, and the opportunities the Lord was providing for them. Then he gave thanks for the child who would be born to them uh, in the coming months. And that's how Mark and Amy announced the imminent arrival of our grandchild. Hey, like that. That's so, so, sometimes our kids have very <laughs> creative and unique ways of announcing yes. these types of yes. things. Yes, that would be neat. That would be a nice, nice yeah. prayer to yeah. hear that. Yeah, what a, what a, what a great... Uh, thing among the last events before the arrival of God's Son on planet Earth were two baby announcements. I like that. First, an angel of the of the Lord told the the the, the aged priest Zachariah uh-huh. that he and his equally aged wife would have a child who would become the forerunner of the Messiah. Then you got to remember, Elizabeth was John's. Mother, that's of course John the Baptist, and Elizabeth, as they said, was barren. In other words, she hadn't had any children. They didn't think she could have any children, and and she's up in years. So she had like three strikes against her, and all of a sudden the angel says, "Oh, by the way, you're going to have a a, a child." And remember, Zachariah was just asking the angel, "How can this be? How can this be?" You know, when he was in there given that's when the angel Gabriel appeared to him while he was offering yeah. incense at the altar by himself. He drew the basically he drew the lot to go in there. And he asked the angel, and the angel said, Oh, by the way, just for asking me that question, you aren't gonna talk again till the baby's born. <laughs> so poor Zachariah. They knew, remember all the other priests knew something happened when he came out yeah. because they said, What is taking him so long? Then they knew he'd seen something. And you remember when John the Baptist was born, he was still silent. Yeah. And Eliz- oh, yes. what did Elizabeth say? When they said, what's he going to be named? What would she say? She said his name is John. She said his name is and John. I don't think the people believed him. Yeah, well. Believe, they didn't believe her. They didn't. Or they thought, this can't be. Well, why was that? Because they usually, don't they take the name of the father? Probably, or something, something yeah. That, well, and there's nobody named John in their family. Right. So it's like, wait a minute, Elizabeth. They John, they, they, they said, here, Zachariah, you tell us. And he took a pen out and wrote it. So his name is John, handed it back. As soon as that happened, he started prophesying. So that's a great story. But before all that happened, we had the announcement. Gabriel came to Elizabeth and told, or came to uh, Zach Ryan and told him that he and his wife would conceive and have this son, John the Baptist, who was not the Messiah, but was going to be the forerunner of the Messiah. And so then, as we read, uh, what was it, six months into her pregnancy, a young virgin was told that she would give birth to that Messiah. The angel Gabriel told her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You like that, right? Favor mm-hmm. with God. Favor. And God's still showing us favor today. Yeah. Yeah. Right? It's been a year of favor and blessings. Mm-hmm. It's been a year of hardships for people. And uh, well, we'll talk about that later. But, but, but you know what? God has been very good. We're not in a coffin. Check. Well... And we're we, upright, and, you know, check. Yeah, you know, and we feel for we're and, healthy. Well, and, and yeah, and our hearts go out for those who yes. who have struggled and have suffered. Yes. I mean, we're we're, we're not certainly because we could be next. Yeah, we don't know. As we said, we you know, and I don't want to beat a dead horse here in terms of just going over this, but mm-hmm. we are remembering that if we walk with Christ, He's going to take our hand here, whether we're walking through the desert here on Earth and into the darkness mm-hmm. that we don't know where this is going, or if He chooses to take us home. There's grief, there's sorrow, there's mourning, there's nothing. Nobody wants to see that. And yet we know through that, if you're a believer in Christ, you have an eternal home waiting for you when this world is over for you. And that's the beauty of knowing Christ is we know we're with him, whether we're here on this earth or whether this world is over for us and we die, we know we're immediately going to be with him. So as we said a week or so ago, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, you know what? Every day should be a celebration. We don't have anything to fear, folks. Regardless of what the Lord is going to, we don't we don't know where our next breath is going to come from. Mm-hmm. And like Glory was saying, it's a, it's it's a gift we can celebrate this year that God has given us, and we want to encourage people, no matter what they've been through, to hold tight to the Lord, even when that's a difficult thing to do. Hold tight to Him because remember He's holding on to you. Just put your hand out there, and He'll hold you. Yes. So, so here we see this that the God of wonder. 
And she and he says uh, the young virgin told him that she he, that, that, that he t the the young virgin was told that she would give birth to that Messiah. The angel Gabriel told her, "Don't be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus, which you just read. The God of wonder who brought his son into the world with announcements of the impossible to a couple too old and a girl too young. What amazing declarations he was sending his son for us all." I wrote a couple things down, but I think we're out of time. You know, I guess just to close it off tonight is that, you know, one of the things we've said throughout this whole year is that uh, I like the song, The Waymaker, uh, because it has this line in it. Even when we can't see him, he's working. Mm -hmm. Even when we can't feel him, he's working. He's always working. He never stops working. And I would just say this to everybody watching, that remember God is at work in the world. He's at yes. work in our lives. Yes. We may not understand everything that's going on. Right. We may be going through terrible difficulties and hardships. We don't understand why, but we hold on to God. We have trust in Him. We have faith in Him mm -hmm. because why? He has proven Himself to be trustworthy yes. and He is so faithful to us. He has never left us. Mm -hmm. He's not going to leave us. And like I said, whether, whether He takes us through this valley and gets us through the valley of the shadow of death so we can see tomorrow or whether he says it's time to come on home either way no matter what we know we are with christ we know we are with the lord nothing will take that away from us if we are in christ jesus and that's to be when jesus came he came for that one thing and that the biggest need we had was for that relationship with God after, of, above anything else. He came so that that would be re restored because that relationship had been broken through all those centuries, through sin. So Christ came, why? To, to bring us back into relationship with God and to give us eternal life. So, so remember, Jesus overcame death. He, he overcame the devil and he overcame sin. And when he rose from the dead, it was completely conquered. Yes. So we, we now live in that faith with Christ. We're very thankful for all he's done for us. And uh, to, So tomorrow night we'll be finishing up our Advent devotionals. I don't know if I'll do this again. I probably won't. You know, it's been good, but we'll probably just do one a week. But this year was different. I was trying to get our Facebook Live going. I know some of you have been so faithful to come on every night. I really appreciate it. Hey, Eric. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Eric's in Dallas. God bless you, my friend. And thank you, Eric. And uh, and Polly's been with us every night. Polly's usually thank on right away. Polly, yeah. thank Hi, you. Polly. That really means a lot. And and I think my sister comes on. And I think a lot of people come on afterwards. And it's not about trying to see how many people we get. Although when my wife's with us, like I said, it'd be like the ratings on a TV show. The ratings just go way up when Gloria's here. <laughs> yeah. But... but um, I think, I think it's the opposite. No, no, I, I know it's you, honey. It really is. Uh, <laughs> Vesper is 365 days a year. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, I, you know, and this is the sad truth. And if you know me at all, you, and, and, you, and you do hear, you do, you can hear me come on to the uh, uh, KAUMC.church. And I do the 10 minute daily, or I call them fresh bread, they're 10 minute devotionals. And those have gone on since March 23rd. And I already have finished out this, I think I finished out this year. I did a couple weeks ahead, but I just want to encourage people to get this connection with you. And I, I uh, you know, I, I know that there are churches where they do their morning prayers every day. And I know a friend of mine, my friend Jim Hamilton, who passed away, he would go every morning to Most Pure Hearted Catholic Church at seven o'clock in the morning and he'd go to the Mass, and they'd have a prayer time over, and they, they would sit off to the, if you're looking at the front of the church, he'd be off to the right. And I got to tell you this funny, not funny, I got to tell you a story before we go. So I went there one year, I remember it was about 2002 or three, and I was upstairs, and it was, uh, it was, the, it was Ash Wednesday, so it was the beginning of Lent, and I told Gloria, the kids were real, real little, they might not even been in school yet. Mm -hmm. I said, I think something's telling me to go to church this morning. So I thought, well, maybe they'll have it at 7 o'clock. So I go over to Most Pure Heart. And uh, the only guy that was there was the guy, was the person out scraping the snow off the sidewalk. Scratch, scratch, scratch. And so I went ahead and the door was open. So I sat in the back of the church. I was the only one there. And so uh, pretty soon uh, people started coming in. I guess it was at 8 o'clock, so I was really early. And then uh, 
I was sitting at the very back, like I said, and uh, pretty pretty full. The, the the grade school kids came in. They had a spot for them up front, and then I saw my my brother's mother-in-law, Vi Bean, came in, and Vi came in, and uh, so I think I may have said hello. I don't know if she saw me or not. Anyhow, long story short, or long story long, whatever it is, I'm sitting in the back, and this gentleman comes over and says, would you mind helping me take up the collection? I said, sure. I said, I don't know. Yeah. So all of a sudden, it's book just time. So we go in the back, and he gives me a, they had a, like wicker baskets, and they would just, they had like on a long pole. And you stick him out. People put their offerings in if they were going to give anything. So I'm out there uh, putting the offering and getting it. And I think I had the left. There was like four aisles. I had the left aisle on the second from the far left. So I was almost in the middle. And uh, at the very end, he said, now you, you now go up front. We'll take these up there at the end. So uh, I said, what do we do? He said, well, you go up there, you just genuflect. Uh, before I could ask him what to mean to genuflect, we were going up there. So I was just kind of watching him out of the corner of my eye, letting him lean. He kind of kneel down and so pet. Anyway, I remember afterwards, uh, Father Frank Chrissy, a great friend of mine, Father Frank, he he was, I think, even a little surprised to see me up there. And Vi Bean said, what was Phil doing up there taking up the collection? <laughs> so so I remember writing this a little story. But I said, you know what? That's the great thing about church is it is, it is live, and you never know exactly what's going to happen when you come to church. So, so church, we've missed being together because it's, it's, that, it's that spontaneity, it's the chemical reactions that are going on amongst people in the audience. You don't know who's going to do what, who's going to say what, and, and little kids could be yelling, screaming, crying. People in the congregation, could, you don't know what they're going to do. And yet that's the beauty of being in a group of people that we consider family. So anyhow, um, we do... Uh, we do thank you. There's Mark. Mark, welcome. Thank you, Mark. What's Mark saying? Oh, yeah. Mark says he don't know if he tells his mother, not my problem. Well, Jesus didn't exactly jump up and turn that water. I don't know what. You take a look at that story. <laughs> Jesus did something. It was interesting. The, the reaction, because Mary, he did not exactly give Mary the, uh, yeah. I like, what, I like that story. You know, I just think Mary knew it was time for Jesus to start doing his miracles and I just think you know the mother but yeah you read that story and I like to uh, I like to I like to just sort of conjecture what might have happened um, at those days you know these were real people the other thing if we got remember when you when you're fully human you're yeah. fully human when you're fully God you're fully God so Jesus was that unique mixture of the both um, it would have been interesting to be around Jesus and all those disciples wouldn't it yes. Anyway, Mark, love you too, brother. Good, great Christmas. Yes, yes, thank you. Yeah, that offering story, that was one of my favorites. Somewhere it's downstairs and amongst all my clippings that are down in the basement. i got to find that. Would you close us in a word of prayer tonight as we finish? Lord, we just want to give you thanks. First of all, I just thank Phil for, for this Advent Vespers that he's spent quite a bit of time on. God, we just thank you for the... Uh, ones watching and we ask for special prayers on, on them and their families. I know uh, we got people watching in Texas and Colorado and Topeka. Yes. And God, we just, we're just claiming your blessing and favor to close up the year mm -hmm. 20. And we're praying, we're claiming your favor and blessing for 2021. Yep. Thank you so much for sending your son to die for our sins, Lord. Mm -hmm. For trading his death for our life that we may have eternal life. We just pray this and thank you in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. Well, we appreciate everybody coming. I like these comments. I wish they were a little bigger. I, I, I kind of go up here like this and look at that. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Mark, for, for your comments and Eric and Polly. And um, again, if you're not watching this live, you can catch it on our Facebook uh, page. And then also Tom Lynn. Thank you, Tom. I can't thank Tom Lynn enough. He puts it on our KAUMC.church website. So last thing, tomorrow at 4 o'clock we're going to do a rehearsal. I'm really looking forward to that for our Christmas Eve service. And um, hope it's going to go well. And then um, we're going to put the order of worship on that Facebook page. So I may stick that on there tonight. So 
if you can look up some of the songs, you'll be ready. We want you to sing at home, get your candles ready for do a little candle lighting at the end. Just uh, enjoy it and, and take part. We hope a lot of people will, will watch it live. But I think it's going to be a real special event, and I can't wait for it. It'll be at 4 o'clock Thursday right here on Facebook Live. So we're looking forward to that. You got anything else to add tonight or not? Okay, well, thank you guys for joining us. We love you, and we wish you a great evening on this Tuesday. And we hope to see you tomorrow for our final, our 10th and final Advent Vespers. And tomorrow night, it's Luke chapter 2. It's called The Story in the Manger. So don't miss that. We'll talk to you soon. God bless you. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.